Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger, and I have some guests who are back today for another interview because today's show features Shakina Ma and Sananda G, known as Twin Ray, to talk about our 5D ascension and the path towards enlightenment. I'm Debbie Dashinger, and the show has been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards, a Webby Award. Currently listed in Welt Magazine as one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year. It is a top self-improvement podcast in Apple Podcasts and recently won the Coalition of Visionary Resources Award for Best Radio and Podcast Show. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. They do beautiful energy work out into the world. And if you'd like to become a facilitator or take one of their classes, go to Dr. Dane here, H E E R dot com or accessconsciousness.com. I'm Debbie Dashinger. I'm a visibility media expert. I am a book writing coach, and I show you how to finally complete that book. And make it a page turner. I also have a company that takes your book to a guaranteed international best-selling status, and I do all the work for the author. And finally, I show you how to be interviewed on radio and podcasts and get massive results. If it is your time as a spiritual messenger, and of course it is, that is why we came back. If it is your time to get your message, your being out there, then I've got a free gift for you. It's templates, it's videos that show you how to do these things. Go to debbiedashinger.com slash gift. It's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash gift. My guests today, back once again, Shakina Ma and Sananda G, who are called Twin Ray. Unified in a divine love marriage, they share compassionate hearts, a clear vision, and deep knowledge of the unchanging truth. Twin Ray represents the unifying creation of all existence. Twin Ray's teachings draw on 5,000 unbroken years of deep ancient roots while remaining urgently, urgently relevant today. From their golden age sanctuary among the mountains of Southern Oregon, Twin Ray share practices and teachings to transcend the suffering of worldly limitations. So you awaken and live your divine truth. Hmm. The reunion Shakina Ma and Sananda G had individually established their own global followings and extrasensory spiritual gifts. Then they reunited in this lifetime at the Great Pyramid in Egypt. As they met, they remembered they were already married and had walked hand in hand in service before. Within days of the reunion, they recited ancient marriage vows in the king's chamber of the Great Pyramid and commenced their shared journey. Jakina Ma comes from a long family bloodline of clairvoyance, oracles, and the spiritually gifted. Jakina Ma comes from a long family bloodline of gifted folks. And Sananda G was born spiritually awake. And at the age of 10, he had a mystical encounter that prompted a four year initiation to master energy healing, clairvoyance, and parapsychology. To learn more, go to twinray.com. And they will both be speaking and also opening the Los Angeles Conscious Life Expo coming up you must attend. If you haven't, you must, you must. It's going to be February 10th through the 13th. I never miss it once, truthfully, when I was speaking on stage, but otherwise, I think in over a decade and more, I've never missed it. I have in the show notes a way for you to get tickets. There is a link. So please go there and register for the LA Conscious Life Expo. Enjoy them today, and then you can get to see them live very soon. And I welcome to the show, Shakina Ma and Sananda G. It is so great to have you back on the program. Thank you. Thank you, beloved Debbie. <laughs> yes, it's been a minute and yet it's been nothing. <laughs> 
it's been a mm. minute since yet no time has passed mm. and yet you've created so much from when we last spoke and before we even started this you were telling me about Haven Ashland and you can go to havenashland.com your new store your brilliant store this gorgeous place where you are and that is not a backdrop they have that is real where they live but there is also a place where they invite people to come work with them and and you have do you have homes there that people can buy and live in we have about 140 acres thus far the vision is to expand into a few thousand acres and start developing home sites mm -hmm. to have sustainable living with biological architecture that's in resonance with with the earth and then help whoever lives or stays in these these um, these homes to actually heal. So they're like self rejuvenating um, chambers, essentially. So we, we are designing, we've designed we them. We have the plans already. We have the master plans right now. Of course but... you do. <laughs> you guys are amazing. You get more accomplished like in a year than most humans in a lifetime. It's very impressive. So th that is a strong mission, all of this. I mean, you know why you're here. And you are relentless to get this done. Is that what drives you? Is humanity what drives you? Is it the soul calling that drives you? What drives us? That's a, it's an interesting that's a good question. question. Yeah. You know, the cliche would be, you know, would be love and and that would be the, the most honest truth, you know, but but really it's it's not even it's not even a drive. It's yeah. it's just it's just our breath. It's it's just what we know and it's why we're here it's, it's there's this is the most amazing time on the planet right now we're going through this incredible ascension cycle and humanity is a cycle yeah humanity is awakening and we're here to support this and what our our vision is really to to manifest and build like physically build the golden age for the ones that feel within their hearts the calling to return to that time of, of living in peace and living in purity and living in great connection to not only the cosmic cycles and the earthly cycles, but to fully liberate one's one's own self. And this is a world that has forgotten how to live. Truly. What do you mean by that? Forgotten how to live in the ways that sanctify this body this temple forgotten mm. how to live in the ways that recognize the sacred cycles and the sacred universe and thus making your life sacred that's the only way to truly live in honor of the life you've been given so, so that could look like living a life of ceremony for example mm. like when you really acknowledge the miracle the profound miracle that everyone has been given to be incarnated right here right now mm. and when you when you acknowledge that you don't take anything for granted you honor the physical body you honor all life you you acknowledge all things as an interconnected whole and many have forgotten that many have forgotten the sacredness of life have forgotten the very miracle to breathe to be here yeah you know, many are looking for you know attracting wealth and abundance and success and all this but they forget the very success of just breathing you know just to have your heart beating like that's what you should be grateful for so that's what we mean by forgot how to live forgot the significance the real purpose and meaning and there's many that haven't forgot there's many that are joining us now and there's many on the awakening path and the ascension path that are remembering and igniting the very flame of their divinity and mm. that's why we're here to support all of that yes and you know, you, you 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 introduced us so beautifully thank you <laughs> Debbie. um we one of the main things that was probably the most pertinent is that this this body this vessel went through um, a death a full complete death for six days and six nights and that original soul transitioned and I came in and thus there is no I heard the calling of the children and that's why I'm here so there is no drive other than this is as it must be. She got the shortcut. She got to drop into a body instead of have to grow the body. That is true. <laughs> That's incredible. I, and may I ask you when you say that, 
Do you mean walk in or do you mean, I do understand what you mean, but I guess the question is what, what is the being, what is the energy or the collective that chose to come in and take over the body? I would love my husband to answer. You know, if we, this could be a beautiful teachings of sort of the science of the subtle bodies, your bioenergetic field, the lower bodies and the higher bodies. You have these sheaths in Eastern culture, it's called the koshas, but they're like sheaths of information. And the soul has a matrix of the, the causal body or the Akashic body it holds mm. all the Akashic records essentially. So we can look at the soul as like a, a memory, a, a hard drive of all the memory of every incarnation, every experience you've ever had. And that is hosting the physical body. So it's, so the, the physical body is hosted by that soul's intelligence. And then ultimately the journey of the soul is returned back to spirits. And spirit is sort of the light of the soul. All the light of the soul, the very life of the soul is borrowed from spirit. Spirit in this case is pure consciousness, you know, the divine. Um, and so when one incarnates, they obviously grow, they, they aspects of the soul come in. So the first breath that you take, the astrological alignment with all the planets, the exact angulation of those planets, these celestial bodies, these are like broadcast signals of, of memories of different lifetimes when you've walked the plane and those planets have overlooked your life, so to speak. So they're held within the, the Akashic and the astral body of your energy field. So when a soul leaves, all that data leaves with them. And so in Shekinah Ma's case, the soul that inhabited and hosted the body from birth, from birth, mm -hmm. left, and so the memories and the nuances, the way that she walked, the way that she talked, the what she wore, you know, those subtle aspects that sort of make the personality, the unique expression of the soul being the personality, that left, and a new field of information, a field of energy, a presence, and known as Shekinah or Shekinah, depending upon what dialect is expressing um, that sacred word it had incarnated in and so this is a big conversation and I, I had the pleasure to speak to her earth mother which is quite interesting because when she came through she said that one of the first things that she said to her earth mother was now I'm your mother, <laughs> spiritually speaking of course and that was a bit of a trip for her, her earth mother to sort of grok and understand what she's actually implying but ultimately, when I spoke with Shakina Ma's um, Earth Mother, you know, she shared her experience, and she's she's open, she's spiritually open, but she's not quite on the path on the path, like you know, fully dedicated on the path. But she's sort of open to new concepts and open-hearted and minded. And you know, her experience was that she had rosary in hand and was in the corner of the of the actual hospital, and her daughter that was on life support and all of her organs had failed and you know she was had a very rare a rare case of meningitis and that spread out through the body and and so she she was told that you know she's got 20 minutes to live and then they put her on life support and she was gone and so she's 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 praying um day and day you know day in day out and seeing it from the mother's perspective it really sort of touches your heart like this is a daughter that you've brought up into the world you know you've spent you've loved your best friend as you you know you do anything for and you how hopeless could a mother really feel being in the corner and watching the daughter and the you know in an icu unit like it's pretty pretty profound and then she had this moment after six days and six nights it was very early in the a.m she recalled and shared with me that she saw this being this being of light that was wearing this very long flowing gown of white light and just descended into the room and he had this very stern look like very focused eyes and very direct and he just came down and looked over the body and he put his hand out and just sent this beam of light straight from his hand down straight into the body that laid um, on the on the bed 
And she was, lack of a better term, dumbfounded. Like she just, what is, what is this? She couldn't explain it. She had no, had no reference points of how to assimilate that experience. And so she was just, you know, deeply contemplating, was she dreaming this? Did you make this up? Did she, she's just going through the whole thought process of what just actually happens. And moments later, the body started being revived and, and Shakina Ma entered the physical body and came, came through. So that, that beam of light that came from a masculine form actually was calling in the a feminine form to come through. And mm -hmm. After that process, you know, a, a few moments later, the body started regaining awareness and started actually instantly healing. And she was known as the miracle one, the miracle one, because there was no, the hospital and the doctors and the nurses were like, you know, she's not going to make it and, you know, make, make sure everything's in order. And she was resurrected and instantly healed her whole all of her organs instantly healed her whole body instantly healed like nothing actually happened it was profound they had never experienced something like that ever in their entire medical career and so from that experience what happened afterwards and, and this was on 10 10 10 as well at age you know that's a, at, that's age a 33. at age 33 so it's like the master number at this powerful portal of time which was a very significant um alignment um, cosmically as well and so mm -hmm. after after that occurred what her earth mother shared with me was that it was so profound to have that a miracle happen and have a second chance have her child back but she noticed that she was completely different the way that she talked the way that she animated the way that she walked the way that she expressed herself and, but she didn't care. She got her miracle. That was enough. She didn't care what had really happened. You know, later on, she's come to sort of understand more intimately and as much as she can. But it was very profound for her to have that experience. And it changed her entire, her entire belief of God. It changed her entire belief of spirituality. And it changed everything. There was, there's no going back from what she experienced and what she then had encountered and so that's i hope i did justice to the story um and in a in a brief brief manner but that's that's what happens um for for shikinama so amazing yeah. thank you thank you thank you for sharing that uh, we didn't go into that during our first interview at all it was made reference but understanding that is profound and reading your bio is already goosebumps there. It just, it's like a, the most beautiful movie. And then hearing this story is like just a whole nother piece of, oh, it feels like hope. It feels like the things, you know, people in our tribe believe in and know to be true, but to hear it and experience it with somebody, you're right here in front of me, in front of us, uh, to know that this occurred for you. And Shakina Ma, if I can ask you, and then we're going to get on to another subject, but I'm so fascinated by this. When you were, I don't even know what the word is, but this being with his hand was able to impel your being uh, through light into the body that you now occupy, did you have awareness of this is strange. This isn't my body. Was it strange at all? Or was it an immediate marriage? No, no, not at all. How do I explain that I was overlighting and overseeing the process from her birth and before her mm. birth, her, this entire experience? So no, one must be prepared for a very, very, very long time in order to come in in this particular way and have this type of Wow. this type of awareness consciousness and this role in the world beautiful absolutely beautiful wow thank you you both have called this the beginning of the year of the mystic and that it's a radiant start of the year can you explain what do you mean by year of the mystic why is it radiant <laughs> 
Why is it radiant? Well, it's always radiance. You know, it, consciousness is radiance. It's always radiant. However, this specific numeric of this year being seven, if we look at the tarot, we can see that the seven represents the chariot. So it's, it's also the, the chariot is the ascension vehicle. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the chariot is also the, the vehicle of the mystical experience. And so the inner mystic, seven is the mysteries so seven is the higher mysteries anything that, that is esoteric or hidden yeah and mm. esoteric doesn't always allude to more of you know this the spiritual or new age perception like esoteric mm. also means the hidden blueprint so if we look at a tree for example what we don't see is the rings and the bands within the trunk that show the age of the tree that would be the sort of the esoteric aspect of the trunk. And then we don't see the roots that grow down into the earth and how those roots connect to every other tree and how those trees are connected into a mm -hmm. synarchic connection. So that's sort of the esoteric blueprint behind a model. So that's what we mean by the hidden. The hidden, this is what is needing to come up. And so a lot of those ancient secrets, the ancient sacred teachings, the ancient sciences, the ancient ways, there will be more of this coming up to the surface in this year specifically. It's very auspicious this year. Mm -hmm. And the mystic is also about the mystery, the great mystery. You know, what is the mystery of life? Like, who am I really? What is all of this, this universe? What is it really? And who, who is God, for example? Like the, the learning of who one truly is, learning that love is at the seat of all experience. It is the very awareness of all consciousness that's the great mystery to be realized and you can't just learn this intellectually you have to have a direct experience and this is also the year that the great mythos is going to be celebrated this is also the year that the great mythos is going to come to light in a different way and we and mean more and more people are going to start recognizing that they are indeed part of this mm. grand story and the grand tapestry and want to get involved and know how they can serve a life greater than the small self. Indeed, million dollar question, huge. And I think many people feel that calling. We and have we have, you have, without a doubt, you have risen to that calling. And with ascension, can you talk about some of the symptoms that people may experience physically, emotionally, etherically, any of the symptoms that are taking place that people not may not be connecting, that this is actually a part of ascension? Let's talk about ascension for just one moment. There's this word that's out there. It's called the ascension. What does that really mean? How does one be able to grasp what this is representing and what this is referring to? So let's just speak about it in terms of frequency. Right. As, and we're going to get, I'm sure, more into uh, the, the cycles of time and why the frequency is rising as it is. But just to simplify it, let's say that the frequency is rising on the planet. The ascension is part of rising that frequency within you. That means that you are taking light and bringing it through you. And if there are places inside of you that are dense, that have yet to be uncovered or discovered, that have not yet been loved into awakening, hmm those energies are going to feel stagnant. So when a high frequency or a high pitch to make it even more simple comes through into something that has density, you're going to feel pain or you're going to hear ringing in your ears or you're going to experience what would be called ascension symptoms. But really all that it means is that your lower centers must now rise to meet where the earth is headed. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening right now, just to simplify that. Yeah, and if we look at it solely biological, we could say, yes, there's the common symptoms is what's this ringing in my ear sort of thing. But that also connects into your, your kidneys. So for example, if the kidneys aren't draining or if the kidneys and adrenals aren't actually 
working in synergy together when high frequency comes in the battery that is like the life force that the kidneys hold and then they they actually connect into the battery of the of the actual intestinal tract and the the intestinal system if the frequency is lifting then you can actually feel those symptoms of detox like rapid healing crises that can come up or if you're living a life where you're really holding on to certain securities like you need this to be a certain way and it's old guard it's from the old frequency it's an old model then you can probably bet that that's going to crumble mm. and so that's also a, an ascension symptom when your entire life is just crumbling around you and you're like what is going on i have no idea i have i don't know how i'm going to make this work anymore you have mm. to think completely outside the box that you've been caged in your entire life so these these ascension symptoms are also like marker points just to look inside yourself you know where are you sourcing your your power is it from external securities is it from external validation is it from external relationships or is it from something more internal more more interconnected within you and so a lot of the symptoms are not only physical physical they're mm -hmm. also emotional mental causal spiritual absolutely so you can have like snapbacks where you just remember past lives Mm. And you just all of a sudden you're living a trauma and there's a there's some type of trauma that's coming up you may not consciously and logically know but this is your body does or your your codex within your dna that's folded of the records of time inside you is just unlocking and then you're going through this entire episode of something that happened in another incarnation and that can also be a positive thing you can actually start attaining the memories and the gifts of your spiritual pathways that you've life streams that you've lived in other lifetimes as well so ascension symptoms could also be wow i'm finally here like i'm mm. getting i'm getting my body and my template up leveled and activated and ready to be of service so there can be a deep calling for, for you to to basically go to different locations around the planet for example um, or join certain communities or learn certain wisdom teachings so there's many different things that can be associated with a symptom but first one must purify one must really go through the purification process in order to be able to hold and withstand the frequency fields and the plasmic waves that are going to be coming into the planet stronger and stronger and have already been coming in certainly since 2017 how long do you anticipate this will continue to occur well there's 20, going to be a big shift in 2024 yeah 2017 was sort of the onset and we're only really experiencing the bow shock waves mm -hmm. and and what we mean by this to give a little bit of of, of a context of a context of what we're speaking about is that we're in cycles you can witness the cycles of the seasons we have biological cycles that happen in 24 hours within our body and we're also in a cosmic cycle we're in a 12,000 year cycle where we're entering into the Aquarian age, which hasn't happened for 26,000 years. So we're in another 26,000 years. And the position of our, of our galaxy is within a, a, over a 200 million year cycle as well. So we're in these massive cycles of time. And that's what, that's what the cosmos cycles is. Within cycles, within cycles. What is, what, what, is, what is the universe? It's a big, giant cosmic clock. That's what it is. That's what all the stars are. That's, it's a big, massive cosmic clock. And we are at the precipice of an ascension cycle where we are closer to, the, to a, a plasmic sheath and a sheath is basically like this these waves of coherently uh, charged and um, structured uh, plasmic envelopes and as our solar system is traveling through these envelopes we are then lit up so we are receiving this massive cosmic radiation and that goes through our crystalline core of our earth and then it converts into gamma wave um, particles and then it also creates low standing sound waves i'll say that again slowly low standing sound waves they are sound waves and they're low standing to the earth grids so this is what we call historically ley lines or song lines holds the songs 
of the ancestors, the stars, holds the songs of the universe, holds the songs of the earth. So we have a new grid as of 2017. We've entered into this, this galactic sheet of this cosmic radiation, and that switched it on. But we're only receiving what we've called the bow shock waves. And what the imagery behind that that word is, is that when there's a cruise liner, it's it's dry, it's it's uh, it's floating or or cruising through the waters. There's waves in front of the cruise liner. It's the momentum of that mm -hmm. of that gravitational force. We're re just receiving those. We're receiving that. So the the massive cruise liner hasn't even hasn't docked in yet. yet. But when it docks in, is at the end of 2024. That's when there's a massive shift. What that's going to do. And the reason why this is so significant, and we've been talking about this for like ever since 2017, in fact, and we've been walking the grids for decades, like literally being called to go to many, many places in the world, over 60 different countries to travel to sacred locations to repair the grids. Mm. A lot of the work that we've been doing is to prepare for this time now, because absolutely, if you can understand the energetic matrix, the energetic container, the, the frequency field, that is the that is the energetic construct that creates the form so all form all physical solidity of form is just frequency so it's held within a frequency field and so that frequency field just as we have an aura so does the earth that is going through a transfiguration and so is our sun and so is our solar system every different planet within our solar system is going through this so is our galaxy it's all going through this and this happens at a powerful time of when a species is ascending into another octave of existence another mm -hmm. density it becomes another root race so to speak yeah so this is this is a massive shift of guards what plasmic energy does as it converts into gamma wave particles and that cosmic radiation starts switching on the dna so the and creating mutations to the dna yeah so it, it can correct and like free radicals for example like when there's free radicals and rogue cells within the body it can actually self-correct and self-heal that and it also can switch on epigenome sequences so the epigenomes they can actually switch on genetic information so it can actually unlock certain records within a dna construct as well so we're going through an evolutionary cycle the last time this happened was 12,000 years ago and every single 12,000 years we have a chance last time it happened there's a great flood and atlanta sunk they didn't do they didn't make the right decision their, their head was in balance with the heart and we know what happens with that when that occurs and so we're coming to another chance now it's about getting as many people aware of this sacred science these great prophecies that many different cultures have been speaking about and 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 leaving records about this is the time that you all showed up for this is the time where you said yes and so this is the most powerful time and this is the year, this is the year to understand the great mysteries of heaven and the heaven within. And that is precisely, I love the mythos and the story of the mythos that I was referring to. And that is why this is the year of the mist. Yes, the, the earth needs a new story. And this is the story of our time. <laughs> and we're here to bring it. <laughs> That's incredible. I've heard things like trouble sleeping, hair loss, <laughs> stomach <laughs> issues. Uh, heart i've heard that a lot of people were going to the hospital and the doctors were there's nothing wrong with you um, the etheric in the etheric template though there might be um mm. and so really it depends on because what happens is again as these bow shock waves have been coming through remember one's field is is grander than the physical form than the physical right. so it is reverberating and making the connections with one fields depending how long that how vast their field is <gasps> and but there's a lot of detox symptoms that come up you know. well there is of course because before anything can happen to your physical body it has to first permeate through the levels and the layers and your physical body is the measure of what is transpiring in seen and unseen ways <laughs> All I can say is I am so excited hearing you talk about DNA repair, rogue cells, epigenomes being turned on, past lives, remembrance, 
uh, activation of gifts. I, I'm just sitting here like, I will have some of that, please. I will have some of that, please. Just that is so exciting, so beautiful that over these next two years, we'll be completing something that's been going on for a while. And then I imagine we'll we'll step into yet another phase Respectful. after 2024. Respectfully, we won't be completing we'll be any of that. We really are going to be beginning it. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. It's, it, it reminds me, I, I haven't shared this with my audience, but I a month ago had hip replacement surgery, total hip replacement. And people would write to me, not everybody, many people get it, but just a few people would say, are you fully healed? Are you out of pain? And I, although I understand that's probably possible um, to create, the truth is it, that surgery was just the beginning. <laughs> then the journey begins for me to come back to complete whole health with this new bionic piece that I now have inside of me. And so, you know, one step at a time, one day at a time, it's better and I'm stronger and I can do more and uh, it's a journey. It's a journey. So I understand. So 2024, just the beginning. Okay. In some ways, thank you for sharing that. And, and, and that's a beautiful metaphor. Um, and in some ways, 2024 is going to be the potential. It holds in its seed a great potential for humanity. Mm -hmm. This also a time when there is a most a new for, for the only way I can explain it in a way that's going to make sense um, as much as possible is let's say there is a new piece of the world soul that's coming in this is going to then allow people right now who are not yet awakening who are not even yet interested in awakening mm -hmm. who are you know people's spouses, husbands, wives, family members who are still very much sleeping mm -hmm. in some ways, that is going to allow them, if, if their soul has attained to a certain level, that's going to allow that frequency match to start to enter into their field, allowing them to start to awaken and to open up more and more. This is the only way to do it. It must come from the heart. Can you speak to the people who are very gifted and spiritually awakened? I know a few of them, but they look at these signs very 3D in a way to say, well, this is what's happening with the financial industry. This is what's happening with the increase in prices. This is what's happening with world politics. This, so they're very focused on that and they see this time as a demise. Can you speak about that and whatever that energy is? This, I believe you addressed some of it when you were saying the hidden is going to come up. I feel that's what's happening is that the underbelly is being shown to be healed, but I'd love to hear your point of view. Yeah, and of course it must. You know, you have to have to resolve and reveal what's been left in the shadows in order right. for that to light. So one may not experience that reality if they're watching for news and the symptoms of news or the signs of news of what is happening on the global stage. It will look like utter chaos. Of mm -hmm. course, of course. When you're creating a, a whole new field, like there's birthing pains. There's a whole new construct that's being designed in order to rebirth this this plane, this world, this this species. It is clear to state that nothing as it has been is working. Right. It is clear too. It, anyone can can see that the way the world has been run is is not in in an equilateral way. It is not about honoring the holistic nature of any one being or beingness and all livingness it must transform there are many ways to transform and some is to destroy and others is to do it gently but when things do not move when they are lightly pushed and gently pushed one must 
there must be a force that comes and moves that and this force is coming from outside of our solar system right now cool that was my next question for yeah, at the you know just the theme level that's just you know keeping at the theme of what we're moving into like 2020 was this this the very the mark of time where Saturn and Jupiter made the Bethlehem star mm. that would that that mark of time on the on the solstice that, that that literally in the sign of Aquarius mm -hmm. two social planets that represent society at large these planets are representative of archetypes and architraits that we live through and as the biggest signpost was that we are in the Aquarian age uh, at that point and the, it happens as a pre-wave in the 70s you know, in the in the 70s as a pre-wave of this energy coming in, you know, 50 years ago. But but and some some not, some attuned to that and and some have been preparing through that energy. But now it's like we're in, we're 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 in a new age. And in the Aquarian age, there's a few things that change. It's all about humanitarianism. Like if it's not supporting humanity, everything must fall if it's not supporting humanity so that's one aspect of it there's also a lot of technological advancement that can happen in the Aquarian age and ultimately there's a whole new open source architecture we've come out of a plasmic cloud that was the the actual field of our earth the electromagnetic field of our earth has weakened and we were in a repulsion zone that was preventing this cosmic radiation coming into our mm -hmm. into our planet so we're now in a new area within the universe because if you think about this earth is a massive earth ship it's literally traveling through space time and it's a mothership it's it's a it is it is the mothership it's, it's a jewel the within, within the cosmos this. so we are in a, a whole new area and it's opening up this open source architecture within the grids of this earth we're seeing that in the financial system open source finance is called what blockchain for example and blockchain is just the beginning of where it's going to go th go to but then you can see governmental industries trying to still hold control and using those systems for their own centralized agenda so when we look at it from political level or the financial model or the healthcare model it's all been centralized it's all been centralized around a very tightly held container of elite power elitism What's happening right now is that circuitry is opening up and the energy is being distributed out through the grids. It's being distributed out through the grids for people to receive that. In order for people to acknowledge the power inside them, they have to get a little bit uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is not right. This, this shouldn't happen. Why is this going on? This, so the people can not get angry but see what that means as a, as a representation and a reflection of the war that's been happening inside one's own ego construct. But that is not an enlightened perspective. It is not an enlightened perspective to look at what is wrong. One must rise and see not just the focus expression of some dot somewhere within the cosmos, but recognize that the whole dance that is taking place and that the grand orchestration, this is a time for absolute, absolute faith and knowing absolute faith and knowing that you've come here for nothing but a celebration and that you come here to bring the light in those places where the light has not been found for thousands upon thousands of years this is the way it must be i just want to breathe for a moment that's very powerful it's very powerful. I feel like that was a, an offering to people, to an invitation to perceive differently and to really awaken to what's happening. Are we getting help? I already know this answer, but what kind of help are we getting from beings from other planets benevolent beings from other galaxies dimensions timelines etc how are they showing up for us right now there's over four hundred thousand different humanoid species in our galaxy alone and they're all supporting 
this great ascension cycle it's like earth has to catch up basically is what's what's being being shared consistently is helping helping make new choices helping through the dimensional blends helping the assistance uh, for 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 people to attune to a more of a unified field of intelligence awareness so there's always been help but more than ever there is help right now absolutely you just have to call it in let us say let us say that the help that is coming in this help is deeply connected to what occurs on this planet because what happens here can affect and does affect what happens in other systems, let us say. Absolutely. And so not only is there a great benevolence that is here working, helping, assisting, but just like a match of frequency must be there in order to have an appropriate communication with, with a human being. It is such that that match of frequency and some aspect part of your being and beingness must also be able to make that match in order for there to be a coherent communication and for them to be able to really step in, for us to be able to step in appropriately. Because this is a free will zone. And what does that mean? The earth is one of the only schools in the universe that is a free will zone. That means that the children create here, unencumbered by anything or anyone, if we could say one, not really, because there is the law of karma that does create ah, but the, 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 the sort of counter activity of that. But yeah. that is already in, that's already set in on, in the existence of anyone here. It isn't something or someone that is interacting or trying to stop or prevent something from happening. One must ask for intervention, one must ask and pray, not from the space of what can I get from something, but what can I give? How can I raise to the point where I can truly, truly be a pillar of light for this world? Then the help will come in in ways that are magnificent those ways will pour open one's heart in, in unimaginable experiences. But the caveat here is that does someone really have free will? Because if your awareness is based on the constructs of your conditioned minds from the beliefs of different ancestral conditioning or parental conditioning or societal conditioning, religious conditioning, and you're perceiving your life through a filter of your own mind that is in division you have a divided mind then the who's making the choices when the mind is creating thoughts from corrupted beliefs mm -hmm. so the your choice if it's coming from the mental state it, it's going to be based on your past conditioning of what you have learned but inherently free will comes from the heart. When you choose love, you know, there's no opposite to love. Some say there's love and fear, but there's not really a, uh, an opposite to love. Fear is, is ignoring love, is, is ignoring that love is always here. So when you make choices from a space of love, it's unity, it's unifying, it's unity consciousness, it's connecting your heart to the entire grid, to all sentient life, and you start seeing the interconnection to, together with all things and compassionate mercy and that's the great lesson here is the polarity integration so the idea of giving humanoids free will so they can just see what happens 
which it's, is it's, exactly it's, what it's, it's more like there's a lot of programming that's happened and there's a lot of information that has been embedded into the grids and the lands and the memory fields. And a lot of people are playing out the stories of their ancestors or their stories of the lands or the stories of the wars and all the, the catastrophes that have occurred. They're just replaying. Sure, so this because whole... they are seeded within the memory fields of those living on those lands. Yeah. And so what's happening right now is this whole grid is being reconstructed. And what happens with that is that a lot of people don't know who they are anymore. Because the belief systems, the identity that they've been trying to pull from is not available in the circuitry system that holds all the memories in the field. And this is happening over time and time. And this happens, for example, when, when an astronaut goes out into space and they leave the electromagnetic field of the Earth. Some have had full-blown um, mystical experiences because the biochemicals in their brain just start activating outside of of the the earth's electromagnetic field and another symptom is they just forget completely who they are they just they just don't have the memories because all your the brain memories are receiving oxygen like it does here yeah the brain isn't wired with the memories inside you it's in the energy field it's in the field so if you're in a different field you don't have the reference points to pull from and so a lot of people will struggle through this time even though it's a great occurrence it's chaotic for people that aren't based on their heart because it's a heart compass that connects you to the greater field and if you're not there the mind is going to be basically struggling and so this is more so that much more so than we're seeing now yeah so, and, and so it is important to acknowledge you know coming back to the heart is the key to all of this This leads us to the path of divine service. It does indeed. How, yeah. How can we surrender to this path of inner mastery through the path of divine service? What does service mean to you? It's a beautiful question. Service means several things. On one hand, it means using my gifts in a way that betters, leaves something, people, locations, situations, energy, wholly different than when I entered it. Hmm. It also means, and I know this because when I do sound baths and I sing and I perform, one of the, one of the big feedback that we receive is way above your singing voice, this, that, it's really the love that people felt in the room. And I, I do have a huge heart and um, sometimes it's very easy to love and especially, you know, love a beautiful group of people who have showed up. And so I think love is an enormous service and whether that's in a sound bath or I'm in an elevator or at an appointment and I can change the energy there. I also believe for me service is if something's happening, that's a crossroads and I am a witness to it or aware of it, what am I going to choose to do? It doesn't mean it's, so, for me, it doesn't always mean it is mine to do, but there are times I know I must. I must step in. Sometimes I need to protect somebody. Uh, sometimes I need to speak up for myself or somebody. And sometimes I just need to do something because whether I'm noticed for it or not, thanked for it or not, but because it will create a change. And because I know in my heart, I must. Thank you. What does service mean to you? Service is love in action. Service is the way one expresses that cultivation of love. And it isn't... It's an, it's an unconditional loving presence. True service is the giving all of, of yourself without expecting really anything in return. It is something that is inbuilt 
into the soul matrix when it comes into a body that becomes ensouled. And what does that mean? Mm -hmm. It means you have not just a piece of your soul or you're working with the connection to your soul, but you're actually bringing your soul into your body. And when you bring your soul into your body, there is this inwelling and upwelling movement and momentum towards giving. Because that's really what the purity and the nobility of the soul is here to do. And so looking at service and knowing that that's really why you're here. Like that's, that's really why you've come here. But service without love is selfish, really, if, it, if it's if it's more self-ambitious for your own, your own benefits, then that service is, can just be self, self-serving. So the service that we're speaking, the divine service, is the very nature of the soul expressing its love or the very nature of spirit expressing love through your actions. But in order for service to be true, love has to be discerned mm -hmm. so love love not just the feeling of love not just the romantic idea of love but love also in its complete neutrality love being the very awareness that you actually are not your mind not your emotions not your body but the very awareness that you are so discerning between fear and love fear being ignorance fear being ignoring the truth fear being making errors that you know not to do and love is making those those true choices from who you truly are because there seems to be this this ascension to something better something greater but really you are already perfect in the totality of what love already is and because you are love you're already perfect but to demonstrate that perfection mm -hmm. is what one must strive for one must thrive with expressing that love in their body loving the body loving the emotions loving the the thoughts sending positive thoughts you know loving through spirituality and unconditional love for unity and then one can truly be in service because then you actually have what it takes to be of service which is love in action and in order to truly be in service you must have detachment what that means is you must be detached from the emotional outcome of what you do. So when you're doing something, it's not for, oh, so I can feel better. Oh, I can do this so I can be seen or I can be heard or I can be, I can be finally noticed. No, it's you do what you do because that's who you truly are. You are truly generous. The virtue inside you is coded inside your heart, inside your very soul. It's filled with virtues waiting to be expressed. Mm -hmm. So when you express in life, you play with the beauty of life. You experience the, the profundity of life, but you're detached mm -hmm. from any emotional investments. And therefore... Mm -hmm. you no longer experience suffering because you have no expectation. Suffering is an attachment to an expectation that you have precognized to what you want from someone or something. So being of truly service, you are letting go of those expectations, those emotional investments. And mm -hmm. you can get there. And by getting there, you can make any aspect of your life of service. So the teaching of service also goes to the point of you use every aspect of your life to serve the divine, whether you get paid for the work that you do. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Fantastic. You should be repa repaid for the, for, the, for the goodness that you're sharing. And if someone gives you the frequency of finances, so be it. If they don't, so be it. You know, if there's that giving there's that replenishment that takes place naturally, but it's an offering. Service is to make your life an offering, no matter if you have a nine to five, no matter if you have children, no matter if you have a family or a garden or anything, mm -hmm. even if the anything dishes, that needs tending to. anything that needs to be tending to, when you're mindful and within your heart and you're doing it with love, you're making that an offering to the divine. And that is what we mean by service. Mm-hmm. Can you highlight some ways that someone can be of service 
simple, larger causes, the spectrum in order to be of this divine, selfless, unconditional service. Yeah, like we said, you can be doing your dishes and you can make that an offering. You know, you can make that an offering. And you, if you have you a family, pay your bills. you can, you you can, can make can, that an offering. Yeah, you pay your bills and you send appreciation. Thank you so much to have electricity. And you thank you so much that I can actually pay these bills. Like, what a blessing that I can do that. Yeah. Anything can be That's turned right. into a level of service. The highest level of service we're speaking about, love in action. Yes. Full love. It's when, you, when you're not noticed, when no one sees you. And we speak about this of like helping with, you know, meditating and creating coherence. The greatest yes. work that you can really do of service, to be completely honest, mm -hmm. there's two things here. One is internal work. Do the deep dive, go inside your shadows, question every single thing that you've ever learned, go into the, and unmask all the egoic notions of the story, go in and go deep, do that work, clear, purify, heal all of the inner child stuff, all the parental stuff, go as deep as you possibly can. That psychological process and the spiritual process of unmasking mm -hmm. all of that, that's service. Because what you do inside yourself, you're creating a ripple effect to the collective. So you are serving the collective by walking the ascension path, just by walking the ascension path. Another really big, noble, beautiful level of service is working with the grids working in community coming together in a sanctified coherent container with other loving beings that are of your soul tribe and meditating frequently and meditating at certain strategic Sometimes. locations and times at grids at nodal points because when you go to a place like for example in the middle of our temple we are so blessed to be able to steward this sacred node which is basically like this vortexual chalice of a uh, frequency that that is a center point that connects to many different grids all around the world. It's one of the most powerful nodes yeah. and on we've, the planet. We've connected it to many different grids all around the world from, mm -hmm. and mm. this is large, but mm. what we do is we bring our community and sometimes we do it online as well. We meditate and we send the very vision, the very trans, frequency, the, the, the transmission of that coherent love, it is multiplied. So if you have a small group of, say, 10 people, 20 people, 100 people, even 1,000 people, it's still small in comparison to the, the greater number of humanity. But when you go to a, a node, a very powerful node that's expansive and connected into other grid networks, that those 10 people, those 20 people, they multiply become millions energy. and millions and so the energy becomes multiplied and, yes and when you do that consistently this is where you can serve the greater world and the greater ascension cycle that's right and if you are one of those it's people, three 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 right now as we say that yeah <laughs> and if you are one of those people that are also what we call liberated and you've done true cultivation, you can offset millions and hundreds of millions of people and beyond, depending on the attainment that you've reached. Yeah, and liberation in this context, what we're speaking about, this because, is because ultimately the word science. is freedom, but mm. what is it freedom from? It's freedom from all the karmas, the samskaras, the soul scars, the, the samskaras of incarnation, all of the genetic pool of data in your genome, all of that information in, in, in your ancestry tree and within your soul tree, all of the negative karma, which means that it's creating deviations from the divine will, all of that is purified. So no longer you're create you're in this causal reality where you make an action that creates an effect. You're in an a-causal reality, which means that you you are beyond cause because you are not you're you're not in a a a place of duality. You're in full unity with all that is. And so the process of that is first you actualize. You want to become actualized, which means you you awaken to your higher self. You awaken to all your gifts and abilities find your gifts and then share your gifts with the world 
you know, the purpose of life is to find your gift and your destiny is to share it with the world. <laughs> and then as you actualize your abilities, there's a deeper level. There's a deeper level, which is self-realization. You realize the unmistakable truth, that one truth that is like a golden lock. I mean, a golden key that unlocks all the doors, all the locks in the mind. The mind is satiated and freed. And so is the heart. So that's where you realize the truth. And then a the maturation of that realization becomes total liberation, where it's irreversible, complete liberation. And the frequency of, of a being that holds that codex or holds that, that field, that liberated field, is humanity itself. Because there's no longer a persona of an individual genetic gene pool or ancestral tree. It is the very species or the very expression of of humanity as a whole as and a beyond humanity yeah as like a source fractal so to speak you know everyone's a fractalized aspect of the whole this becomes more of a source fractal that is all of it contained in the one and that's the true nature of consciousness but to embody that to have a mind that's fully enlightened to that to have a heart that's fully activated in coherence with the unified field that's a different story that's that's mastery at the, at the grand level mm. I know that you both offer these empowerment transmissions and people can get on your newsletter and become aware of those whenever you offer them. So empowerment transmissions, for instance, about manifesting hearts, wishes, desires, being of service, any of these things, and some of them overlap. Hopefully they overlap quite a bit. And what is, what is behind the transmissions? And how might we also engender that ourselves, bring up that energy within ourselves? Yeah, it's simply it's pure cosmic force, and it's simply the 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 science of harmonic induction. Mm -hmm. What we're doing is mm -hmm. utilizing the field, the one unified field, the cosmic force of creation, utilizing that field to harmonically induct you into a higher coherent state in a, in a higher reality into a higher field so you feel more your true self you feel more loving and kind and generous and giving and a more of a demonstration of your the true nature you, you experience that peace and through that can that field you can have instant healings you can have instant epiphanies you can have profound creative ideas and it can help restructure entire life. Mm -hmm. So one thing that we love to do, we have uh, miracle mentorships where we every single month we come together and we mm -hmm. help beloveds you know, really understand the theme of the cosmic dance. Like what is the theme of every single month? What is, what is the initiation that one is going through as the sun goes through a new energy field in a new constellation? The sun represents the light of your soul. So that means an aspect of your own soul is also going through that. So how do you partner with the cosmos? How do you become a micro expression of the macro existence? How do you weave into the metacosm, all the many forces and cycles within creation? So we teach that. And what we do every full moon is do a full moon transmission because the full moon is the full illumination of the, the sun, the solar light emanating from, from, the, from the moon, just as... Consciousness is the light of truth. It emanates out and through the minds of humanity. Mm -hmm. And so the mind is also like the moon. It has many different faces. It has many different thoughts and processes. And the sun is like the light of consciousness. And so we just use the field, the field to harmonically induct you back into your, your true nature, to whatever you're ready to get to get to that's why sometimes it's a gentle process and sometimes it's a powerful you know, cosmic awakening <laughs> or a cosmic slap depending upon if you need that quick re-snap into alignment um but but ultimately it's just to better your your life it's a complicated answer to a complicated question um but the the basis of that is is just the larger your energy field is the more you've cultivated, the more cosmic force you have to send. It's yeah. it's in fact that simple. Cultivation and absorption is key. 
you know, all is light, right? So how much light are you absorbing into your cellular network, into your energy field, into your biocircuitry system? How much light do you actually hold and how much light can you transmit? Can you then... So that's what ascension is. Ascension, any symptom, whether it's positive or negative perceptually, it's more light being anchored in to your cells and lighting you up. Mm -hmm. And that is the ascension process. Well, we call it incension because it's an internal it's process, internal. actually. It's the incension and you're ascending within. Mm -hmm. And so every every empowerment session, every transmission that we do is designed to just blanket you with highly coherent light. Mm -hmm. And what about ascending the physical body? Are there secrets to ascending the physical body? Absolutely. Will you tell them? <laughs> so probably okay. not here. <laughs> so secrets. Let's 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 acknowledge what this what you're really asking. You're asking what unfolds through the ascension process for the body, and what's the secrets to accessing more of this light. There's a safety mechanism that plays out. You know, if you yes. understand that. Through the science of cymatics, when we give this demonstration a lot, like cymatics is the vibrational dish, you put sand on it, you increase the frequency, it creates different complex geometric structures. So those geometric structures is a external version of what's happening in your cells. The higher the coherent waveform of frequency that's going through your biology, you're creating new geometries within your cells, within the waters of your body, and within the circuitry system of your of your biocircuitry system and your energetic bioenergetic field so the higher the 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 frequency and you can't just you can't just blast the frequency or the sand just goes straight off the plate and that's exactly what happens if you blast the frequency you get short circuited basically you have to it's exactly. a, it's a gradual step by step process and the first process is purification that's why i said earlier purification is 98 if not 99 percent of this process but the great secret is get a good teacher <laughs> get a good teacher that has gone through the process and then you'll find the summit because if you walk up a mountain there's infinite ways to walk up the mountain but there's only <laughs> one best way and if you have a guide that's done it before and you have the most direct route and direct path it's going to make, it, then so it's gonna make it so much easier for you so the map of your and safe and safer for you. Yeah. And so the map of your biology and the ascension processes, they unfold at different octaves of where you're at on your journey. So you need to make sure that you know teachings up here mean nothing if you're not there. You have to make you have to make progress like every step on a staircase. Not one step is more important than the other. They're all equally relevant to getting to the next floor in your life. So that metaphor is also pertaining to, to this message is that the secrets, all of this, there's many secrets, there's many secret passageways, there's many oh, secret there's, circuitries, there's, 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 all there's different energy systems, there's different chakras that can help you in, embody more gifts, like there's, there's many, many things, like there's all the tellers, the telekinesis, the telepathic connection, ultimately what happens is all your energy centers, your endocrinology, all the endocrine glands and the energy centers of the chakras, they start merging. They go into a gold spiral and then they merge into one coherent field. And all the sheaths that we spoke about with the bioenergy field, your aura, they start coalescing. And they turn into this luminous light body. And that's, that's where everything is in a harmonic state, where all your your chakras are aligned, coherent, your field is aligned and coherent, and then your field can actually go through another metamorphic transformation because the cocoon of the the cocoon of your your shell of your mm -hmm. your field is the very home that actually can hone that light then birth into more your angelic nature or the butterfly in this metaphor. Oh, yummy, yummy. Do you have experience with ETs and UFO connections? Are you in constant communion with that factor or any other factor that isn't seen by the eyes? We have, yes. We have had many 
encounters with sitting on councils with different star races um, from different yes. committees and different signets um, indeed we've assisted in 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 many different ways off planet uh, we've been on countless ships and had physical experiences of the this, physical body going to yeah, yeah we've, we've had a lot of that we don't talk about we, we don't sorts of things. we don't go around and say oh we walk by the way doors and we can do this and we can we don't do we traveled back in time and, <laughs> but yeah. i live for this so this is this is tremendous wow. so thank you for being so honest i appreciate it i mean i think Summit. people know anyway listening to you feeling you it's very obvious um but it's it's interesting to hear it certified and um are these people are these races or uh beings that you commune with so these are ongoing relationships that you have yeah yeah we could we could say that there's there's relationships but it's it's depends what the purpose is that's that's really that's really the interaction it's not just for exploration it's not just to explore and sort of see what's possible it's more like there's a purpose behind the the encounters there's a, there's a purpose in behind different communications um there's also you know, different yeah different planetary systems that we've we've incarnated from and that we check in frequently and then yes. we travel we travel to different you know realms and realities and so this is the nature this is the fun this is this fun? doesn't really have anything to do with spirituality to be honest it's right it's, this has nothing to do this with is this is just this is just the fun of what can happen yes this is just this is a different level of genetics that we're talking about that thus allows us to have these kinds of interfaces Mm, my god this is like the best movie and novel all into one we're being very conservative right i now. can tell and i'm going to honor that and what about is there a sacred medicine that you use that assists your work is there something that you like to use or follow or ritual practice anything like that we have different certifications that we we teach um, that helps basically give you certain technology to employ into your life um, we we like to empower you know people empower beloveds that what we've found valuable or would have, or been, would have valuable been valuable in our journey we want to existed. offer that that very value to to humanity so we've created it yeah so we've created different you know modalities that go into the entire anatomy of the ascension process of the physical body and what happens and what you need to clear what needs to so you have basically what we've done is give you access to the different quantum charts so to speak the quantum screens of the unified field of what if if you had clairvoyance and you had the ability to see or sense or feel these are the aspects that you want to work on and, and focus on. So we give you tools in order to attain those higher sense perceptions. So we do that. We also teach a lot of the internal alchemy processes, the alchemical process that can help rejuvenate the physical instruments. And because your physical yes. anatomy is a temple, is a sacred temple. It is a divine. To make it a living temple. It is a divine design. The original blueprint of the human species was a divine design. A lot of that knowledge has been forgotten so when you learn how to connect with the divine system of the original blueprint of your anatomy you understand the metaphysical processes that occur to each organ and each glands and each bodily system and that interconnects mm -hmm. to planetary systems and celestial constellations so you are the body is a measurement of the cosmos so we love to teach that we also are very blessed to be stewards of sacramental alchemy sacred alchemical elixirs that do help support this is only available for our very high higher depths and we only when you allow that when you've got to a point of higher cultivation but ultimately 
you are the medicine. The medicine is inside you. You are the elixir. You are the technology. You are the greatest technology. You just forgot how to use it. It's dormant for most people so on we're, the planet. Yeah. Yes. So we're here to teach mm -hmm. people, activate it. And there's many things. We believe in giving you every single spectrum of the rainbow, <laughs> the full spectrum of every color and every ray to be able to make your life heaven on earth. Right. Not just twin ray, but all the spectrums of the ray. And you will be a Conscious Life Expo, February 10th through the 13th. Tell me what you're going to be talking about. And again, for folks, there is a link here in the show notes so you can register to attend. Highly recommended. You can get to see these beautiful beings in person. Please tell us what will you be talking about. Well, we're going to be doing the opening ceremony. So we're going to be welcoming everybody and transmitting um, in our field in the space. And so it, it will be a beautiful opening and a wonderful womb space to bring everybody into to really ascend them and catapult them through the journey at the expo. That's mm. the thing we're doing. And that's at what time? 1 p.m. 1 p.m. on Friday. Beautiful. She looks yeah. at me like I'm a, like, I'm a <laughs> You're the agenda. <laughs> I, have, I have no idea. What, what, even, what day is it? <laughs> Friday the 10th at 1 p.m. Absolutely. LAX Hilton. I will help you if you need help. I'll be there. You're, you're told when to show up. And we exactly. show up. You're told when it's time to go and we go. <laughs> so we have, we have two other workshops. We're doing Living in Heaven on Earth. And we're mm. teaching all about more that we've expressed today but giving you practical sure. applications of literally experiencing heaven which is your entire reality being filled with the love and the joy and the peace and the miracles that you truly are mm -hmm. so that's we go we're going to go deep into every single layer of the process that unfolds naturally through the ascension cycle so you can truly live heaven on earth and it's it's a very complete workshop it's it something is. that is yes. is a beautiful beautiful gift and then the second workshop we have this is, is our free workshop yeah and then the second one we have is 5d ascended relationships where we're gonna we're gonna go into relationships and we're gonna teach Secrets. about calling in the one what's it mean to call in the one and also live in the oneness of a relationship or to perfect your relationship into a higher harmonic to go so through. even if you're in a relationship how to create more of that oneness that you're talking about that divine relationship divine sacred relationship within what is already established exactly Absolutely. yeah this is yes. this, and we haven't done this yet you know we haven't shared yeah. much about you know this the sacred rituals and the sacred way of of relationship and the different aspects of relationship so this is the first time that we're really going to share and this is by popular request by a community and <laughs> just to 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 make it clear to you and to all of the beloveds watching we are in what's called a brahmacharya relationship yeah which means that we're completely celibate that's and right so we are in a celibate relationship um because we are in one coherent field mm -hmm. and we are one one expression so There's and no may i just say i i know this watching you it is it's like a symphony hearing <laughs> You speak, for instance, Sananda G and Shakina Ma, it's like a ballet with her hands is almost speaking, enacting what you're saying, but a compliment uh, constantly to watch the both of you. It is so beautiful. And it is for certain to me, incredibly apparent that there is a one energy, a shared space there. Mm -hmm. Thank you, beloved, for those precious words. And yeah, so we're going to teach more about that and, and, and how sacred a container of a relationship can be. And we also have a booth and we're bringing our, <laughs> our haven, um, which is our, our store here um, from in, in Ashland, Oregon. We're bringing, bringing the haven. It's, our temp it's a temple store. Yeah, it's a temple. It it's really sick. is. It's, it's very palatial. It's a sacred crystal um offering it's yeah and so we're bringing special special 
special aspects we shared earlier about Our the elixir for example there's there's a golden elixir that we're bringing and that is fully encoded with gold which basically allows you to you know embody gold which is a superconductor for your pineal gland and for your entire biology we have and this goes through the blood brain barrier which is extremely important yeah it's real alchemy it's, it's not just alchemy. you know blessed water it's it's really profound um in what it does and what it, it's actually from a 5,000 year old recipe actually. Um, but that's just one We we've actually created a whole line of biocuticals, which are like whole food um, supplementation to support the ascension. They are bringing miracles to yeah, tr just true, We're, true wealth and health for people. Yeah. It's, an, you know, for us, we wanted to create something that because there's so much soil depletion, there's so many different chemicals that one is bombarded with in a day, a lot of the ascension symptoms is actually detoxification. So we wanted to create a whole line that would give you as much nutrients. So like one of our one of our formulas, for example, it's called Galactic Gaia. One scoop of that is like having a thousand salads. Like you just can't eat that amount of nutrients, but this empowers the body. So it it detoxifies, rebuilds, restructures, rejuvenates. So we've got this whole whole um, line of biocuticals that we're bringing and crystals and sacred offering candles and, and ancient living in, artwork. Yeah, ancient incense for ceremonial sacred temple Katrina. incense. We will, like, will you be at your booth very much, do you think? Um, Ish. Our team, will be. our team will be. And they're all amazing. Our team is like... Oh my gosh. They're all incredible bright light angels. So whether yeah, we're at whether whether at, we're at our booth, we, we might make an appearance or so, but we got our booth for our community. That's why we got the store. We got the store for our community to give them dynamic service for mm -hmm. the world. And mm -hmm. what they what they tell us every single day that the store is open is that the amount of healings that happens just from coming in, the frequency changes. <laughs> yeah people so significantly some start to cry when they come through and they feel like they're home for the first time mm -hmm. children that are coming in feel like this is they're finally being understood for the first yeah. time and it's um it's definitely revolutionary yeah it's it's there's nothing quite like it it's very celestial it's very sort of like we are etheric celestial. and celestial and it's 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 a full experience just to come <laughs> and we have all these you know sacred sacred jewelry offerings as well so we're going to bring everything and and yeah we we our twin ray talismans yeah some of the most powerful talismans yeah on they're, the planet. they're pretty amazing they they yeah they expand your Not field by like first. by like a 300 yards like it's it's amazing i was thinking it'd be so cool to come to the booth and if somebody could I was thinking of you, but if perceive my body and what would be good for me to get, I don't like to just get whatever, but you yeah, know, if there's something in particular that would be very powerful for me, you know, that sounds fabulous. Yeah. They are trained to do that. And we can yeah. also help a little bit. Yeah. Our angel team is, is well-trained. They're, they're well-certified and we're, we're teaching our community how to scan someone's biology. Excellent. Oh my exactly gosh. what they need in order to yeah. rectify whatever symptoms they're experiencing right what biocuticals they would need what, what energy jewelry, like, what yeah. energies it's, need to call in so it's we've been doing that yeah nice much more to come we're really just beginning <laughs> yeah. we, we really are just beginning so. uh, i'm so grateful to know the both of you and this conversation was amazing powerful full of wisdom and insight. And I feel so directive, really opening a possibility for people and all of us to step into in a big way. And I thank you for that. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to see you in person in a few weeks. That's going to be tremendous. And to also watch you speak in person. This is Dare to Dream, Twin Ray. What do you next dare to dream? Uh, this is a huge question for you, so I'll leave it to you. But what are your future dreams or goals? Our dream is to manifest the full kingdom and queendom of God on physical planet Earth for every beautiful, pure heart to live in the sovereignty of their soul, sovereignty and purity of their being, and to live in harmony in the utopic, euphoric Eden of what this life should be and can be 
and we're going to do it together. And we're going to do it. Yeah. This is a co-creation. So if our dream is the heart's calling of humanity's dream. Our dream is the destiny of humanity and we have come for that. Mm, thank also. you. How mm. lucky are we? How lucky are we? Folks, if you would like more information, go to twinray.com. Also, LA Conscious Life Expo coming up. Uh, it'll be worth, I promise, your time. And I end today's show with this quote from Stephen Covey, perform anonymous service. Wherever we do good for others anonymously, our sense of intrinsic worth and self-respect increases. Selfless service has always been one of the most powerful methods of influence. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation. Dare to dream with Debbie Dashinger. Subscribe, like, send this to a friend or family who you know need to hear this conversation. Next week on the show, I am featuring the amazing Oscar Mira Cuisada, and he's respected Kamaska Curandera and Alta Miso Yok, adept from Peru, founder of the Heart of the Healer, originator of the Pachacuti Mesa tradition. Oscar is an internationally acclaimed shamanic teacher and healer. And I promise we will be having profound conversation indeed. Thank you for joining us today on Dare to Dream. <laughs>